for the gate to open to get in the show. My plan was to be there early, but traffic was slow. Anyway, I reached the tent on time, but I had to join a line. If you see me crowd pass now, waiting to enjoy the soccer line. Yeah. At New AFC promised more jobs and a good life. Instead, we lost 30,000 jobs. Taxes went up, people are less safe, and cost of living skyrocketed. Now, after four years of neglect and corruption, the APNU AFC gang are coming with more empty promises, only cause they need you now. We are smart. Fool me once, shame on you. This time, we will not be fooled by your sneaky fake news, APNU promises. We fought in PPPC to get Guyana working again. Good evening. It's always a pleasure to have a conversation with you on economics, on politics, the issues in our nation. And I'm, I'm excited. The, many people tell me that they watch the show on Facebook and they, you know, they use their telephones to watch, their, uh, watch the show. And I appreciate those that join on Facebook. That thousands of you, every, every um, show is on live on Facebook. And one of the things that the PVP will do in the next election, after the next election in the new administration, is reduce your taxes on data. So immediately, your data plan will go down because this government, PNC government, that new government has put taxes on data. And hopefully we will encourage more competition in the telecommunication industry and to bring your data plan down. So as you watch the shows today and you watch uh, other events, um, today the PPP had a massive get together protesting for the right of democracy, for, the, for a date for election in front of the Ministry of Presidency. People are standing up for their rights. And so no taxes on your data plan, future new competition, bring that data plan. Maybe we'll see unlimited data plan, hopefully in the near future. So exciting plans ahead as the PVP outlines their manifesto for the next decade and how they plan to bring our country together, united with an economic vision that will bring that reality into our homes and into our lives. You know, technology has done great wonders for us over the last few years and it's a you know it's getting even more intense as as the decades go on you know i remember in the old days we used to have one telephone in our homes now every one of us wants a telephone so as we expand the future of our internet services across the country you know with no taxes on your data plan all of us will have an opportunity no matter where we're at to have access to that technology and you know it reminds me of a story you know, my nanny used to live in Unity in Mahaika, and she used to have a, a latrin. Most times latrins are built, you know, 50 feet downwind, and everybody wakes up, goes to the latrin, and walks there. Remember, after a while, my mom and dad was able to uh, rebuild our house, and they told her that um, we're going to bring that latrin into the house. My nanny went berserk. Why would I want to bring that latrine into the house? You know, we all know, you know, when you go to that latrine, it smells. Now today, every one of us, if we could afford it, wants our own latrine in our rooms, or our own toilets. And that's the difference as the world changes and, and, and new concepts and new ideas come into place. We've got to be ready for that. And you have to have a government with a vision that looks across the nation and develop the right plans to make our country better. Now, when you look over the last, you know, the, the, the years prior to 2015, the PPP spent a lot of time and money building a great economy. You know, if you are building a house, for example, and you spend a lot of your money and time build that house, and then in the next year, a fire comes and bam, wipes the entire house out, you will be very upset. 
And that's why our nation is upset today. A good economy was built. A sustainable economy was built over the last decade. And the PNC APNU government came in and burnt it. Burnt it down to the point where we are suffering. You know, if you look at the Bank of Ghana report that came out yesterday, sugar is down 34.3%. We all know that. But what does that equal to? That's about 350 million US dollars worth of foreign currency that doesn't come into Guyana anymore. And you tie that to our exchange rate. You know, for decades, we all know it's 200 to one. For a decade plus, that exchange rate did not move any form. Today, it's up 5%, you know, the rate is from 216 all the way to 225, 230 in some places. But the real rate at 216 is even 5%. So Mr. Jordan, as he talks about an economy, when you look at the Bank of Ghana report, with sugar down 34.3%, you've got rice down 9.1%, you've got the quarry and the mining plummeting, bauxite is plummet. These are real life economic issues that affects all of us. And, you know, people, one person, I went to Bodo Market today, and one person said, Peter, you need to explain the loss of why we are not getting our goods sold in the market as much as we used to. And, you know, the, the folks were from some of the outlying areas, Barbies and the West Coast, and they said, with those thousands and thousands of people, tens of thousands of people losing their jobs, a lot of them can't afford to come to the market anymore, but you know, they're, you know, we have an entrepreneurial spirit and they would have planted their own bora, their own okra in the backyard if they could have. Now they're not coming to the market to buy our goods. So the rippling effect when Mr. Granger just fired, you know, 7,000 sugar workers without any thought, it was not just about those jobs. I mean, the sugar down is 34.3%. That has affected our foreign exchange reserves, has affected our foreign exchange rate. It has affected the farming community that, that people don't have disposable funds. It has affected many other areas. You know, you, you don't have enough money to go to the, the corner shop or you're not using the taxis anymore. Another person from Linden told us today that yes, the government is spending buku money on roads, but the taxi driver said, I can drive on a little better roads, but guess what? Nobody's using my taxi because there's no money flowing in Linden. Bauxite, as I said, has plummeted over the last quarter and, and over the last couple of years. More and more, we find real life economics. So when you listen to Mr. Granger or Mr. Jordan praise themselves that we've got a great economy, they just need to come down to the level and have a conversation with you in the market have a conversation with you on the street. You know, when they go on their outings, they're setting up their air-conditioned tents and you're coming to them. They don't understand every dime they spend on those trips and those air-conditioned tents. It's your money. It's less money you're going to have in your pocket. You know, today we saw reports that no minister opens their own door, their own car door, their own office door. The driver has to get out the car, open the minister door, and open the office door as they walk in. What crap is that in our nation today? We don't have the luxury to do that. These ministers, four years ago, some of them didn't even have cars. Some of them had no good big houses. You know, now you're, I drove by one minister house yesterday. He's got a brand new BMW parked in his front yard, covered up with a with a uh, tarp. The house didn't look any better, but the fact is they're you know, spending money, they're making money. Good life is going to the APNU PNC government. And we've got to stop that. It's, it's the vision, real life economics. You know, when people complain about the sugar, sugar's gone down 34.3%, as I said, when you complain that wow, government was investing so much in the sugar industry. Well, when you take out what Daisuko was doing. For example, Daisuko was doing draining, irrigation. They were doing healthcare for the workers. They were uh, access to the roads. So when you strip that, all those extra funds out of that, 
the government still had to now spend, Kaisoku was profitable. And the, the after effect on our economy, on our, our, our foreign currency and foreign reserves is significant. And we've got to move on from that. And, and going back to my burn story, you know, after building your home and having a strong, nice economy, and the PNC government came in and burnt it, burnt it down. If you look at our projects, four years plus, going on to five, the airport is not finished. The East Coast Road is not finished. The Sheriff Street Road now getting going. Four years later that the PPP left all these projects, either started, funded, and today, four years later, you're still, you know, I drove up to Unity last night and, you know, it, it's taken forever to get that, that road done. Four years later, a project that was started under the last administration and cannot get done. So when you say give them more time, I don't know what more time you want to give Mr. Granger. He's running from elections. Mr. Granger is running from elections. People said the PVP is running to elections because we know we have to speed up because one, it's an unconstitutional government on September 18th. Two, we've got an economy to revive and manage. We've got working people and citizens to take care of. We've got to ensure uh, one, of the, one of the commitments that Mr. Ali has outlined in the PPP manifesto is no more new taxes. He's gonna reverse all the taxes that new put on us and no more new taxes. No, you know what a commitment that is? You've got to be able to manage an economy so well when you tell the people no more new taxes. When you look at the discipline services and you look at them and you tell them, you know, we, we can have elections before year end, you're going to get your bonus back. All the discipline services that used to get their end of year bonus, you will get your bonus back. Right? We have to ensure. That's why we're running to elections. We, the people are asking. Let's get on with the business of managing our nation. Let's get the election call. Stop breaking the law, Mr. Granger. You know, if you're scared of election, you're scared of election. Even Freddie Kisu, you know, Freddie and I are colleagues. I mean, we've seen each other over the decades. He said today, he knows Mr. Granger will lose the election. And he outlined the betrayal that Mr. Granger and Mr. Nagamutu and Mr. Ramjitan has done to the country. You know, Mr. Ramjitan also said today to us, or yesterday, he said, it's our fault, basically, that we get robbed because we walk around with money. We walk around with money and we get robbed. Well, what the heck he expect us to do? You got to walk with money to the market. You got to walk with money to the store. You know, most of these businesses, you know, they haven't done anything to improve the technology in order for us to be able to get our, our bank cards to be used in every every area, in every store. So you have to walk with money. And he says, guess what? It's your fault. You walk with your money, you're enticing the thief to thief it. What crock is that, Mr. Ramjatan? You can't say that, you're the Minister of Security. Your job is to protect the citizens. You are giving credence and telling the thief man, guess what, everybody's out here, they got money in their pocket. It's their fault that they're walking with that money. You could take it. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, let's run to the election. And that's why the, today the PVP and other supporters stood up in front of the president's office and called for a, democ a democratic right to vote for a new government, for election. Stop being scared, Mr. Granger. I know that you're ill and, and maybe you're worried that a campaign will, you will not be able to sustain a campaign and you're buying time, but that's not going to do any good for the country. Real life economics is affecting the nation. Real life economics. Our cost of living has gone up. Our exchange range has gone up. Our disposable funds are less. And we need those commitments that the PPP plans to do. You know, putting back the grants in the, the school vouchers, 
looking into the interior and ensuring all those people have an opportunity to continue to build their their environment and, and, and work in the communities. We're looking, as I said, to take data off of, of our plan. We're looking to reverse all the 200 plus taxes Mr. Granger has terribly done to us and made our economy stagnant and decline. Those are commitments the PPP has made and will do day one. Election can't come fast enough. And I think the administration, the legal caretaker administration, the soon to be legal, their caretaker for now, will realize that no matter what promise they make in an election cycle, if they say, hey, we only had four more years, it's going to take you four years to finish the East Coast Road, four years to finish Sheriff Street, four years to finish the airport, never got the Demerara big drop bridge off the ground, never looked at any new initiative, not a single new house lot, not a single new development in our nation. Mr. Ali had done hundreds of thousands in his, his, his tenure as Minister of Housing. He is committed as part of his new administration. In the first few years, 50,000 affordable housing. You know, when you have affordable housing and each one of our citizens have access to affordable housing, you know what a commitment that is. You have seen it in the past. You're going to see it again. These are real life economics for the positive. For the positive in order for us to be able to grow our economy and bring money back in our pocket. So nothing to do about oil and gas. Literally we're looking at our plan and ensuring that all the sectors are revived and functioning. You were making money prior to 2015 without oil and gas. We want you to make that back that you were making and more. And as we bring the new industries on, those will help fund other projects that will even improve that reversal and that disposable funds back in your pocket. Many of you can get loans today to buy a car or buy a house because you're not working. The sugar worker that is out of job probably lost a lot of their homes. Many people have lost their homes. I look at the papers and I see the bank advertising auctions for people homes, people cars, because they can't afford to pay it. Mr. Granger, you can run all you want from election. It's going to catch up with you at some point. You've got to call the elections. You've got to, you know, you're way past the deadline. You will become illegal. September 18, the laws of our land are very clear. And Running scared, you know, all of us get scared in our life over different things. I know you and your team is very, very scared. The delaying tactics. You spend billions of dollars on litigation to hang on to power after December 21, 2018. Billions of our dollars you have spent on litigation. Lower your fees to defend something you know the law doesn't allow. And those billions of dollars, Mr. Granger, could have paid the sugar workers. It could have put money in our economy. It could have not to have to take those new taxes. Imagine you took and raised our taxes, Mr. Granger, to pay Mr. Marcus and the lawyers that defended your illegal approach to staying on power. Imagine you took, you raised our taxes, Mr. Granger, to pay foreign lawyers to defend a case that you know, if you're morally, if you have any moral standards, Mr. Granger, if you have any integrity, if you trust in our constitution, Mr. Granger, you would have never raised your taxes and take billions of dollars to pay foreign lawyers to defend the case that you know, you know, Mr. Granger, there is no way you can literally look in the eyes of the nation says you don't know you are wrong. The fact that you have lost the confidence of the nation on December 21st, you lost the confidence of the people, you lost the confidence to manage our economy, you have failed the nation. And instead of accepting what you did and then reverse, instead of looking in across 
the aisle and, and coming to uh, an agreement that says, hey, here's the date for election. Instead, you continue to raise your taxes and spend our dollars on lawyers defending defending your case that is against the Constitution. Mr. Granger, I don't believe you have any moral authority. I don't believe you're a man of integrity. I don't believe when you swore in the Constitution that you would uphold it. I don't think you're following that. I believe you have lied to our nation. I've mentioned that many times, the promises you have not delivered, and you have burnt our economy that was built strong. Just go, maybe you don't have to get US dollars because you know your everything is paid for you. But you go and look at our exchange rate, you know, it's it's ridiculous. So what happens? Businesses now have to spend more money to buy goods. And when they have to spend more money to buy goods because the exchange rate is so high, they're gonna put it back on the consumer. So we are now did not make any new money in the last four years, no new jobs, no new salary increases. We got more taxes we're paying. Goods have gone up. So you have squeezed our dollar to the point where our hundred dollars is not worth anything anymore because you have taken it, almost all of the hundred dollars, you have taken it from us. So we may have twenty dollars left of a hundred dollars to really spend on our family and paying our goods, paying our, our car payment and paying our mortgages. Mr. Granger, when you drive around in your 18 car motorcade and Mr. Nagamutu drive around and all your ministers in their fancy vehicles and have their drivers opening doors and opening you know their office doors, they go into their office and they have fancy offices, all painted in green, all with the most expensive curtains and, and furniture and dietary food. Aren't you ashamed to walk the streets? Well, you don't walk the streets. Aren't you ashamed to go to a church or go to a function and knowing the fact that you have hurt so many people in our nation? Mr. Granger, I hope you know, you you come to grips with the reality of what you have done to our country and your redemption may not be there, but you can start by calling the date for election. You would have an ability you'd have a chance to tell the nation a little more of your lives and a little more of your con games about why you should remain in power. But at the end of the day Across the political aisle, Mr. Granger, people are not wanting you back in government. And, and more and more your people around you, your ministers and those that are coming up with all the, the false reasons to stay on to, with power, they know this is the end. You know, they know when they go and drive to Linden and they tell people, look, we paved the roads. You know, the Lindenites will tell them, thank you for paving the road, but we don't have any money. Look at the bauxite industry. What has happened? We've got roads, taxi drivers don't have fares. People don't have money to spend driving on the new roads because they can't afford to buy a car, they can't afford to get a loan. So Mr. Granger, your moral authority is gone and we've got to ensure that at the fastest rate possible. When you talk about credible elections, Mr. Granger, we need a credible government. We need a government that will be able to look at its people and ensure that they are taken care of. And that's the future, and I use the term winning the future of our economy, of our, our nation. That is the fact that when we put our plans together, and you're gonna see that all over our nation very shortly, no more new taxes, 50,000 new jobs. I'm gonna tell you exactly how that's gonna happen. The bonuses for our disciplined forces, no taxes on our data, reversing all the, the license fees and the, the irrigation and the drainage and the, the mining. Imagine mining has gone down, mining and quarry. You know, 
put it, taking all those extra taxes they put on on the mining community, revive that. You know, gold prices are going up. And so many miners are so upset today because they would have had a chance to benefit from any increase in gold prices. Now they don't because their land was taken away. The taxes were too high. We've got ministers that have taken away land and given it to themselves or other people. These are real stories. These are not makeup stories. These stories have evidence behind them. Mr. Granger, that's the damage you have done to our country. And one good thing that our nation has to look forward to is the fact that we will have election. No matter what and how long you take to call an election, no matter how much you stand there and come up with the excuses, we all know that the billions of dollars you're spending is our money. It's not PNC money. It's not APNU money. When the PPP campaign for elections right now and they go on the streets and they go across the nation and have their rallies, it's their money, contributions from donors. When you're out there and your minister's traveling, you're spending my money. You're spending our people's money. And you ought to give us back that money. And instead you continue to waste it. So Mr. Granger, you know, you 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 know in the next couple of days maybe there's some more clarity that will come our way. But no matter how long it takes, you can run for a long time. And the farther you run, the more scared you're gonna get because you're gonna know that elections will catch up with you and your people that and voted for you the last time have said across many places I go. I've gone into many of your areas that that were hardcore supporters of the PNC and they tell Mr. Jagio and Mr. Ali and many of us we can't wait to get you guys managing our economy again because they know they have an opportunity to make money. And all we want as a citizen is a better life. We want unity, we want togetherness, we want to live in peace and harmony with each other, we want to enjoy business, we want to enjoy the safety in our homes, we want to make sure that the crime that is skyrocketed stops, we want to invest in our police force and our discipline forces, pay them right, give them back their bonuses, let's improve our security sector, and stop blaming the citizens, Mr. Ramsatan, don't blame the citizens for the thief man. Get the thief man and put them in jail. And Mr. Granger, stop pardoning the thief man. Stop pardoning people that are criminals. Let them serve their time. That is not something, not because you have the authority to do that, you're going to let people out of jail. They did something wrong to go to jail. By letting them out, you're giving them an opportunity once again to do something wrong. And we are facing that, the crime rate, you know, people are beating, beating in their homes. Mr. Ramstad, I think you ought to apologize to our nation. And, and your leadership of Mr. Mr. Granger leading you, I can see why Mr. Nakamutu, you, the other ministers, really have a hard time delivering. Because you're with a vision and as a leader. Mr. Granger has no vision for our country, apart from the green paint strategy I mentioned. And we are faced with an economy and the Bank of Vienna report, which is a government body, tells the story of the decline. The exchange rate tells the story of the decline. There's so many other numbers out here that tells the story of the decline. And the fact is, you have burnt our economy. A house that was built 23 years took from a bankrupt economy built it to a solid foundation, solid pillars, roof on, living quarters, and you came in, lit the match, and burnt our economy to the point where we're at today, where thousands of people are out of work. I will have a, a few minutes for a few phone calls if you 
have the chance to call in. Uh, normally on Tuesdays, I don't take a lot of calls. But I wanted to, to really bring the real-life economics to the table, the real-life issues that we're faced. Mr. Major, I don't think you'll walk through border market in four years. I don't think you'll walk through Starbrook market in four years. You have not gone to Perico market. You have not gone to Mont Repo market. You have not gone to the Amsterdam market. Have you? Do you know what real life people issues are about? You don't even have press conferences. So the, the reporters can't even ask you questions and relay what people are saying on the streets. Mr. Ranger, you have been a president that is aloof. You have been a president that, that has failed our nation. You have hardly shook anyone's hands. I watch you as you drive by in your car. Your head is straight up. You don't look around. You don't see the people on the streets. You don't drive down Regent Street anymore. You drive with your head straight up because you don't you can't. You can't look at the people because you'll fail them. So the fancy life is about to end. You know, I, I said you took the, the opposition benefits away. Well, you soon will be an opposition person, Mr. Ranger. Good evening. Hello? Good evening. Good evening. Hi. Uh, I have my own funding, but it's also a situation. Did you, did you register? No. Okay, good. Well, you did the right thing. Tomorrow, the Chief Justice will rule on the house to house, but either way, the exercise is illegal. Where you have already registered, you already have an ID card, there's no need to register again. The, the numbers, they're lying, saying, Hundreds of thousands of people have registered, and here you've got people calling, walking, saying, I didn't register, where are these numbers coming from? Okay, thank you. And that's okay, whatever they write, it, does, it, it doesn't matter. We are, we're going to ensure that, you know, in a claims and objection period, everyone have a right to vote. Everyone that is not on the list will get a chance to be on the list. It's a great time in our nation. We've got to sign up for democracy. We've got to bring back money in our pockets. We've got to bring back, reduce our cost of living. We've got to ensure that all this taxes that Mr. Granger has put on our nation is stopped. We've got to ensure that all the businesses, you know, all the billions of dollars he has spent on, on um, lawyer fees over the last year, is returned somehow to the Treasury, you know, we've got to create new opportunities. You know, we can recover some of that money, but we've got to stop it. And we're doing that, we've got to ensure that our people, politics is about people. Politics is not about government. Politics is about if you take care of the people. And Mr. Ali is going to be committed to the people of our nation to ensure that the plans and programs under his administration is delivered, delivered on time, with results. Look for those initiatives. Be part of the process. Get excited because it's your future, our futures, our decade. We will win the future and we will ensure that every one of us be part of our nation's history and future or be part of our nation's direction and our vision and with our hands working together we will have victory for democracy and ensure that our young children in the future benefit from our economic plans, benefit from social cohesion, benefit from just us working together. And as we bring our people together under the new administration of the PPP and Ms. Ali, I think we are in an exciting uh, future. Be part, join us. If you see us out here, Shake your hands, ask the questions. If you want something else done that's not been done, something has been done bad in the past, tell us. We're ready to move on with managing our nation. Thank you for joining me. God bless.